Hello there. In this week's Data Radio Show, we're going to be taking a look at Silicon Valley. As you know, we're going to be inspired by Silicon Valley. We might take a look at some clips from the show. Look, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. It's all about pivoting. So sit back, get ready to pivot, and watch the episode. Today we have a really different show for you this week. As Jared, the character from Silicon Valley, the TV series says, we're pivoting. Hey guys, I just had a thought. Okay, so this is it, right? A lot of successful startups launched with a different business model. And when they ran into trouble, they pivoted to something new, right? Like Instagram, that was a location-based check-in service when it started, and then they pivoted. I'm Paul, the host of the radio show, and today I'm joined by Sam Williams, a community marketing guru, podcast host of The Intelligent Asset, and futurist. Sam, welcome to the show. Well, it's good to be with you, Paul. Now, as is tradition on the show, why don't you let listeners know a little bit about your background? Well, interestingly enough, I I cut my teeth during the dot-com boom in the Silicon Valley. And I guess that's kind of one of the reasons why we've made this reference to this iconic TV show. Um, during the dot-com boom, it was pretty heady times in the Silicon Valley. Uh, as a lot of venture capital money was being poured into startups. And I guess we're seeing something very similar at the moment around AI. So um, that's one thing that I have experience of. I've been in and around technology, software and sales uh, around the world for the best part of 25 years. And most recently, uh, obviously, the rise of generative AI is having profound effects on, on the way in which we both market uh, and also generate value for customers. So I'm, I'm fascinated by artificial intelligence and what it actually means in the world of information management. So working in and around the marketing of modern data management for the last 10 years, for you, what stands out as sort of being really consequential about where we are at this point in time? I guess I see it as being an inflection point. Um, you know, it's as profound as the widespread of electricity was this time 100 years ago. Not many people know that around 1920, um, you could get supply from two different electric companies in your street uh, at two different voltages, um, which is a bit tricky in terms of how you actually adopt standardized appliances to do you know, labor-saving tasks like use a vacuum cleaner or use a dishwasher or something like that. I think we're at a similar sort of point in time where uh, with the adoption of artificial intelligence, we're going to see some really profound changes in terms of the way in which value is created. Um, and there's so much data that's been generated over the last 20 years. We're sort of on the cusp of doing some really incredible things, leveraging that data. You know, in just the last 18 months, we've infused the, the workforce with an army of AI interns in the form of agents that can perform functions much like university graduates or young interns uh, that are straight out of college. Um, they're fairly naive, they're pretty smart, they don't necessarily know exactly what it is that they're doing, they need supervision, management, and this is just starting to bite in terms of what it means in the workplace. I think that AI is truly collapsing time to value in a sort of similar way that electricity actually collapsed the time to value um, back a hundred years ago. So then why does this all matter to data vault practitioners and the methods that they use? I guess as um, most listeners may know, Data Vault has its origins in data warehousing. Um, you know, a fundamentally important way to manage vast quantities of data 
but it does date back to last century. A lot's changed since uh, the turn of the, the 21st century. You know, the technology has got faster, better, and more cost effective. And the proliferation of data is, is phenomenal. With billions of IoT sensors um, and devices like our smartphones collecting all manner of different information. And there's uh, opportunity to turn that data into value, but do it at a much faster pace than it's ever been possible before. Um, there's a much broader context for the application of data science uh, outside of just the data vault methodology. And I guess this is evidenced by the demand for data scientists in the last decade. You know, today, uh, the hottest jobs are actually in AI engineering, of which data engineering has a crucial role to play. So I guess much like data warehousing practices have had to evolve or pivot, as Jared would say, um, we see the need to evolve the community to embrace that next generation of data engineers who now inhabit a world of generative AI. It's kind of like electricity uh, and a standardized plug there. AI is something that we can use on demand and put to all manner of different purpose, or apply to all manner of different purposes. So then why are we pivoting? I guess it's uh, it all starts with who um, we're pivoting for. You know, so I guess, we're focused on providing value for the hundreds of thousands of um, practicing data scientists, analysts, and engineers who work with data lakes, data warehouses, and those that are charged with managing and interpreting big data. Um, our sense is that they face one of the biggest and likely to be the biggest challenges of their career, and that's the rise of generative AI. You know, this technology is going to totally alter how we use information and derive value from it. And that challenge is on two fronts. And in terms of the, the audience that we're wanting to help and, and serve with the community, and that's how to deliver robust, well-governed and secure AI applications, leveraging existing data sources, um, and here it's about innovating in collaboration with your customers. Uh, the second challenge that, that we see that uh, our, our audience is facing or the community is facing is how to use generative AI to perform what you do today in a low risk way, you know, essentially innovating how you actually do your own job. Um, so, those are the two challenges that we see emerging uh, that broadens uh, the application of both data vault uh, in terms of how it gets uh, used, but also broadens how we would like to, to serve the community out there. There's, there's also a third audience um, that we'd like to add value for, and those are the aspiring data scientists, engineers, analysts, and budding AI engineers. So you mentioned adding value there. How will we deliver value? So I, I guess um, some of it um, we're already been experimenting with, and that's the, the radio show. Um, so the format of the radio show uh, is going to move to one where we want to interview the most influential people in the data and AI space. Uh, it's something we've been experimenting with for the last four months, um, and the format's going to change essentially. And so more on this as we pivot in the, in the next uh, few weeks. So next week's episode is gonna be something new and fresh and different. Where we're gonna take a much uh, closer focus on how you make your way in the world as a data engineer in the context of artificial intelligence. I guess the second thing uh, that is new is uh, we're going to be producing a weekly newsletter where we'll keep you up to date on the latest thinking and trends 
as well as curating and reviewing those cutting edge tools. And the, the space is moving so fast at the moment, uh, our aim is to evaluate those various tools so you don't have to. Kind of think of that newsletter as being uh, an unboxing uh, newsletter, but it also the idea is to um, pack that newsletter with actionable insights that help you develop your career. So one of the things that we've worked on really hard over the last few years is building community around Data Vault. How are we changing things when it comes to community? Yeah, I, I guess as we've been working with the, the 500 or so members that we've got in DVIC at the moment, we've noticed that there is a need to sort of broaden what it is that we provide. So, um, you know, there, there were limitations with the existing portal technology that we were using around search, um, providing classroom type of environments and, and calendaring. So um, what we've done is, is go out to market and look at what are the cutting edge um, community platforms from a, a learning and an education point of view and a community uh, enablement point of view. And school is the one that we have um, picked on. Uh, uh, so S-K-O-O-L. Uh, and it's got some great features, particularly around search, that learning experience and keeping members up to date. See, I'm a big fan of how school gamifies things. So it gives you an incentive to go out there and actually interact and communicate with others and learn from, from what's on there. Um, version 1.0 is rolling out over the next few weeks. Um, people need to stay tuned as we progressively introduce new features and classes and updates. We've been working for a while now, actually, on trying to nail this one down. Um, Sam, I think that's pretty much everything, unless there's anything else you need to add. Well, I guess the, the main thing is stay tuned as we actually pivot. Pivot. It's a great word. Love it. All right, guys. Well, that's us Word, word of the day. Word of the day. Absolutely. Um, I'm wondering how many people are going to sit there and go pivot from Silicon Valley versus pivot from friends. Let's see if there's a, <laughs> a crossover in there. Hey guys, thanks very much for tuning in and having a listen. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the video, tell everybody about what's going on uh, and tune in again next week. We've got a fantastic new lineup sort of planned and it's going to be a really interesting time for all of us. Until next time, have a great day and may the force be with you. We've got a great name. We've got a great team. We've got a great logo and we've got a great name. Now we just need an idea. Let's pivot. Let's pivot.